Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video we're going to be showing how to change the front and rear differential oil in a first generation Chevy Colorado. This video should also be applicable to other first generation GMC Canyon, Hummer H3, and the uh, Isuzu knockoff uh, clones of this vehicle. This is a Z71 with an I5 five-cylinder engine meaning it does have the four-wheel drive package. So there are two differentials, one at the front and one at the rear. Obviously, if you have a, a two-wheel drive vehicle, you would not have the front differential. So for this process, we're gonna need a couple things. The gear oil, 7590, 75W90 gear oil. And I'm actually using this, uh, this old bottle here I like it because it's got this um, pump to put it in. It's a lot easier than trying to hold one of these little bottles up, and you'll see in a minute how uh, difficult it can be to access the fill hole. You'll also need a 15 millimeter socket to open the fill hole on the front, and a standard uh, 3 8 drive ratchet with an extension to open the drain hole. So to do this process, let me slide underneath here. Looking at the differential from the front, you'll see the fill hole right here. And down at the bottom is the drain hole. Now this, this system on the front is nice because it does have a fill and both a fill and a drain. Uh, the rear, you'll notice when I get back to there, does not have a drain, so you need to remove the differential cover gasket, uh, or the differential cover with the gasket to remove that to drain the old fluid out. I do like the front system more with the fill, the separate fill and drain holes. While you're under here, it's usually a good idea to inspect the conditions of your other systems in this area, such as the uh, steering, the rack and pinion steering boots there and there. You can also grab your tie rods, try to wiggle them, check for any play in those, check your, there's some additional boots up here, steering rack boots, front axle boots over there, again, because this is a four-wheel drive system. So, always a good idea to, you know, just inspect everything else in the area where you're working. So, to do this process, it's pretty straightforward. You would just take your uh, 3 8 drive ratchet, pop it in the drain hole, and I did already loosen this a little bit, just turn it, and actually we'll take the fill plug out first, just so that air can get in. Make sure you have a drain pan. Also make sure that your vehicle is, if you're using jacks or jack stands, make sure that your vehicle is securely parked on the uh, jacks and your parking brake is engaged. I should have mentioned that at the very beginning. So, we'll take out the fill. Let's just set that over here. Bear with me, it's kind of difficult doing this with just one hand, one hand holding the camera. I've used tripods before and I do, I would like to use that, but it's hard to really focus the camera on a tripod exactly where you want to focus it at. So there you go, you can see the old oil coming out. And I'll pause the video while this is coming out here. So once your old oil has finished draining out, you would go ahead and put the drain plug securely back in. And just a note, uh, gear oil can be pretty slow to drain, especially if it's cold. So while I was waiting for mine to drain, another thing that I did was uh, grab my grease gun and add some grease to the Zerk fittings on the bottom of the two tie rod ends, which you can see here. And that'd be kind of dark right up there. Uh, so those are the only two greasable points in most of these vehicles. I remember on my old cars, you, they had like 15 grease points. You could grease the idler arm, even the U-joints uh, on some of the older vehicles, upper, lower ball joints, all those things were greasable. And most of those components on new cars are now sealed. Um, 
but at least in my case, the tie rod ends, the uh, outer tie rod ends are greasable. So while I was under here, I added a little grease to them. Super messy process. Definitely takes two hands, three or four hands if you have them. Um, would be pretty difficult to video just because of how messy it is. But in any case, so drain plug back in, fill hole connected to my pump. And I don't know if I'll be able to do this while holding the camera. Let's see. that to fall out but it's a pretty straightforward process just pump it up until it's until it reaches uh, full and you can tell it's full if you stick your finger uh, pinky finger in through that hole and you can feel the level up there at the top GM specs call for I believe like 1.4 quarts or 1.4 bottles um, so that's why I had a couple and then like I said just pump it pump it back up till it's full reinstall your uh, fill plug and I'm going to pause the video at this point while I finish pumping this up, close the plug, and then we will uh, circle around to the back of the vehicle and do the rear differential. Okay, and for the rear differential fluid change, we're going to need a few things. A standard 3-8 drive socket wrench, a couple of extensions, a... 13 millimeter socket, PV blaster again or WD-40, your oil, and you're going to need a gasket. Now unfortunately the rear doesn't have a drain bolt like the front does, so the only way to remove the fluid is to take the cover off. This is a GM Genuine Parts 12479020 gasket. This is the standard gasket for a Z71 four-wheel drive 2007 Colorado. They may have different model rear ends. Uh, in particular, if you have a two-wheel drive model or if you have one of the newer models with the V8, I believe those used a different size ring gear. Uh, so there would be a different gasket associated with the V8 vehicles. So the gasket, I did already hold this up, but just to make sure before you start anything, just hold your gasket up and make sure that it, that it lines up to all of the existing bolts. Unfortunately, like I said, with no drain plug, all of these bolts around the outside of the gasket need to, the outside of the cover need to come off including this uh, couple up near the top that are securing the brake lines. So once you actually get all those bolts out, the cover will sometimes fall loose on its own. Other times you might have to gently pry it off with a uh, uh, flat bladed screwdriver or a pry tool of your choice. Um, the fill hole is right up here. Again, that's loosened with your uh, 3 8 drive socket wrench just stick it in the square hole and break it loose and I did have a pretty tough time again with this uh, so I had to use the uh, the PB blaster I've seen some comments in forums where people really have a hard time getting that loose um, there was one person mentioned they found a, uh, a breather they couldn't get it loose they rounded off the hole they had to uh, fill the fluid through a, a breather tube somewhere um, some of my old cars had a breather tube. I don't feel one up here. I don't really feel like looking for one. Uh, sometimes there's a breather tube around the top, though. Um, so again, you know, as with the others, just make sure that you have that loose prior to taking off the pumpkin cover over here. Otherwise, you'll have a very hard time filling it up. So it's going to be pretty boring watching me loosen all of these bolts, so I'll probably go ahead and uh, pause the video again while I get all of them loose. It should be pretty self-explanatory at this point. Um, I think I may have mentioned already, GM does say you can reuse the gasket. Uh, however, anytime I have to mess around with a gasket, I always like to just throw a new one on there. I know some people, you know, they'd rather cheap out and not buy the new gasket, but I mean, I think it was like 20 bucks. So, you know. Since I have to take it out anyway, I might as well put in a new one. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here while I loosen all of those bolts. And then we'll see either the fluid will start to drip out on its own or I might have to 
pry the cover off a little bit. I usually tend to loosen, you know, loosen them equally rather than take them out one at a time. Uh, I don't want to put any strain on the gas on the uh, the cover and bend it. Uh, for example, if you had half of the bolts out, you know, all the weight would be hanging on that half. There's a risk of bending it. So again, I'll go ahead and pause this. We'll re we'll pick back up once all these bolts are loose. All right, so all of the bolts are now out, and the cover is still solidly in place. I just wanted to put the camera back up again for a quick second to show you uh, how a couple of the top ones, I had to loosen this bracket, loosen the bolt at the top of this bracket so I could swing it around because the bolt is stuck in there. And again, over here, I had to loosen this, this bracket stayed in place. Uh, I just had to kind of push it out of the way a little bit. So this is really one of those, uh, you know, GM in their infinite wisdom type things. They knew enough to put a drain hole in the front differential, but why couldn't they put one in the back? And I know there's a lot of uh, aftermarket differential covers that do include the, uh, you know, a drain, a drain plug. But since I don't have one of those, I have to do this the old-fashioned way. All the bolts are out. The cover hasn't even started to budge loose, so I'm going to have to just gently work my way around it with, uh, you know, a flat screwdriver and uh, try to pull it loose without bending it anywhere. I'll pause the video and pick it back up again once I have this open. Alright, so just a few taps with a uh, hammer and a uh, short flat screwdriver. The fluid is now starting to drip out. Honestly, can't remember the last time I did this. It's probably been at least four years. Um, at least three or four years. Should keep a better maintenance log. Um, fluid is pretty gross looking, so glad I'm doing this. Um, so the differential it has all the gears inside of it that uh, transmit the rotational motion of the engine into the forward motion of the vehicle. I don't want to get into too much into the mechanical aspect of the thing, but um, it's pretty neat how they operate. On my old Blazer, I had to completely disassemble one once because the uh, seals at either end of the axles started to leak and I had to take everything out and slide the whole axle out uh, from either side so internally inside of the differential I had to disconnect I guess it was like a locking key a locking pin which I had a video of this it was a pretty interesting process and then slide the entire shaft out from either side and I hope I never have to do that again. It's one of those things that I probably would pay somebody to do, just like the heater core on that old Blazer. Uh, terrible project. Um, I know some shops will charge you $1,000 to do a heater core. Worth it. <laughs> it is a lot of work uh, um, on newer vehicles. Um, but So while this is draining out, I'm going to go ahead and pause this again. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll wiggle it a little bit loose to let uh, more of the fluid out. So if any GM engineers ever have to come across any of my videos, please put a drain plug on this, the transmission fluid, and for the love of God, a drain plug on the radiator. Having to pull the lower radiator hose off just to get the fluid to drain out is really inconvenient. It also makes it a lot harder to do uh, uh, fluid, fluid uh, flush services. So as I said, we'll pause this again, pick it back up again once we have the cover off, and uh, take it from there. All right, and here's just a quick look at it with the uh, differential cover off. The fluid that came out was almost a uh, chocolate, uh, uh, coffee, coffee with creamer color. I did a little research on that, and that indicates that there's uh, some water in the fluid. So I found the breather, which, by the way, is... <clears throat> So I found the breather, which, by the way, is right up there at the end of that hose. So I just kind of tried to wipe that off and clean it off a little bit. It is pretty high up. It's not like I've been driving through any lakes, but it was... All right, so that's pretty much the process here. You can see the inside now. I've been using a flat razor scraper to, uh, let me see if I can get this in the camera here, show you, kind of scrape off some of the uh, old gasket that was around the edges here. And I got to clean that off a little bit more before I put the cover back on. But that's basically it. Installation is uh, removal of disassembly and 
once I get this cleaned off, the new gasket put in place, the cover sealed back on, I'll go ahead and pick this back up one more time and uh, show you the process of filling it up, which again should be pretty self-explanatory at this point. Just want to show you as well, while you have the differential cover off, there is a magnet in here. It's a permanently attached magnet. I have it upside down, so this is actually the bottom. And while you have the cover off, you want to make sure that that's wiped free of any metal shavings. There shouldn't be a whole lot, um, but you know anything you do find, you want to make sure that you uh, clean off of there before you reinstall it. When I was younger, I would paint this some crazy color before putting it back on there too, but I think I can forgo that these days. And that brings us to our last step with the differential cover and new gasket reinstalled and tightened down. I also put a little dab of uh, Permatex Ultra Black around there just in case there was any small uh, water leaks. So with that tightened down, then our last step is to refill it. And I'm using my same pump bottle that I used to fill up the front differential. One other tip I can pass along is when reinstalling that plug to put some perm put some uh, anti-seize around the outside of it that should help make it uh, a little bit easier to remove the next time you need to take that out so i hope this video on changing your front and rear differential fluid has been helpful if it has, please give me a uh, thumbs up and a like and subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of videos on car repair and computer repair and uh, hope to continue doing more in the future. Any questions, please drop them in the comments. Have a great day and stay safe out there.